Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Mate. Today in this video, we'll be discussing about pathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2 and we'll be answering various questions like why does the SARS-CoV-2 virus spread so effectively? Why does COVID-19 disease manifest as pneumonia? How does it enter the human body and why 14 days of quarantine is being prescribed, advised? Why is SARS-CoV-2 a systemic disease and how does the human body fight back to SARS-CoV-2 infection? What is the cytokine storm? So let's get started. So how does the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus enters the human body? There could be various entry routes like respiratory droplets via sneezing or coughing. Next is aerosol. The infectious particles will be present in air for about three hours. Next up is direct contact, that is hand to face. This has a major threat. Next is fomite or surface transmission. The virus stays active on wood or glass for five days, plastic or steel for one to three days, and on aluminum or copper for about eight hours. Now there is something called as the incubation period, which is actually the time period between the exposure to symptom onset and the incubation period for SARS-CoV-2 is 2 to 14 days in which a median of a fifth day is considered okay so symptoms can be seen by fifth day now this is the reason for 14 days of quarantine from last exposure to confirmed case now why does the SARS-CoV-2 virus spreads so effectively this is because of asymptomatic transmission okay the transmissibility of the virus begins before the onset of the symptom which is different from mers and sars virus where the transmissibility is a number of days after the symptom onset now a question arises as to why does the covid 19 virus manifest as pneumonia this is so because the lung epithelial cells basically the type 2 pneumocyte they express the ACE2 receptor and we know that the S1 subunit of the spike protein has a domain the receptor binding domain or RBD which is which has an affinity for the ACE2 receptor. Now it is clear that whichever cells of the body would express ACE2 receptors that would get infected by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So what are the other regions of the body where ACE2 receptors are present? It is the it is present in nose in goblet cells and ciliated cells which facilitate its transmission. It is also present in type 2 pneumocytes of lungs which causes pneumonia. In absorptive enterocytes of gut therefore we have diarrhea as a symptom. In endothelial cells of blood vessels causing circulatory disorder like coagulopathy and clotting which is leading to increased amount of morbidity with persons in persons with COVID-19 disease. It is also present in cardiac myocytes thus it is causing myocarditis. It is present in all the ACE2 receptors are represented by olfactory neurons of CNS thus there is loss of smell. Now we can understand why SARS-CoV-2 is a systemic disease. So what does the virus do after entering the human body? Let us consider the example of lungs which is most commonly affected in the SARS-CoV-2 disease. The virus slowly triggers a response within the lungs which see lungs contains sacs of alveoli. We are here considering virus after entering the lungs what does it do? It triggers a response within the lungs. It contains alveoli and here we are considering one alveol, single alveolus. Okay. We know that in alveoli gaseous, gaseous exchange takes place. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. The alveoli contains alveolar cells. The function of alveolar cell, one of their function is to produce surfactants. 
which coats the alveolus and helps them to keep the alveoli open thereby allowing gaseous exchange so these surfactants they basically prevent the collapse of alveoli we know that the sars cov2 invades the type 2 alveolar cells or the type 2 pneumocytes okay so the sars cov2 invades the type 2 pneumocytes let us consider a so this is a type 2 pneumocyte with ace2 receptor and tempres2 receptor which is the transmembrane serine protease 2 receptor and the virus with the spike protein okay the spike protein basically acts as a key of the lock of ace2 receptor so from the receptor binding domain the s1 subunit binds to the ace2 receptor and the protease enzyme which is the uh, of the tempres2 receptor it acts as a molecular seizer and it clips off the head of the ace2 receptor okay so sabse pehle s1 domain se of the spike protein receptor binding domain of s1 subunit of spike protein the virus has bound to the ace2 receptor after that the protease enzyme of tempres2 clips off the s1 subunit and binds to the s2 subunit okay we know that when the s1 subunit is clipped off the s2 subunit the spring which acts as a spring is activated now this allows the internal spring loaded machinery of the s2 subunit to get activated and this gets inserted into the plasma membrane or the cellular plasma membrane of the host and brings the virus in close proximity this creates a portal between the interior of the virus and the cell thus the virus can now deposit its genome into the cytoplasm and start replicating so the viral genome has entered into the cell cytoplasm now since this is a positive sense single stranded rna genome it can directly produce new proteins and new genome in the host cell by attaching to the host ribosome this is the host ribosome and the virus has attached to it and it will produce proteins the host ribosome translates the viral rna to make proteins that will make rna polymerase now this rna polymerase it reads the positive stranded rna again to make a negative stranded rna now this negative stranded rna is reused by the rna polymerase to make another positive stranded rna as well as other small rnas viral rnas now these small rna strands will be read by the host ribosomes present in the adenoplasmic reticulum and they'll help to make the structural components of the virus the endoplasmic reticulum see ye structural proteins ban gaye okay this endoplasmic reticulum it will transfer these accessory accessories and the structural proteins to golgi apparatus in the golgi apparatus it will it will be packed up with the rna positive single stranded rna and new virus will be formed these viruses will be packed up in the vesicles and they'll be released out with the process of exocytosis through secretory vesicles so this is how the virus hijacks the human cell and forces it to produce the viral proteins and the complete virus now the question arises does the human body not fight back the answer is yes the human body fights back to this viral infection in various ways first of all the b cells which are one arm of the immune response we know that they start making antibody okay against the 
viral proteins. Now these antibodies did directly bind to the viral proteins and destroy them. If the cells get infected, then another arm of the immune system kicks in, which is known as the killer cells or the cytotoxic cell. See, this is an infected cell. The infected cell actually what it does, it presents a viral peptide at the cell surface in conjunction with the HLA class 1 molecule. See, this is the viral peptide. which is a surface receptor on this cell. So HLA class 1 is the surface receptor and it, the infected cell has produced the viral peptide. The viral peptides in the binding groove of the HLA, it signals the killer cells. Then the killer T cells, they recognize the viral peptides, bind to the infected cell via the T cell receptor and kill the infected cell. Okay. So initially generated immune response is same as any viral attack. But why is the immune system failing in SARS-CoV-2? This is because the B cell antibody production is impaired. What happens is in SARS-CoV-2, the germinal centers of the lymph nodes where the antibodies mature and allow for the recognition of the viral peptide that is not formed. Okay. This germinal centers are not present in SARS-CoV-2. So there is an abnormal immune response. Another reason why the immune system fails is because of the inflammatory cytokine. Okay, so what happens is we have this alveoli and the infected alveolar cell. This infected alveolar cell, it releases interferons cytokines and certain intracellular components which are the damage associated molecular patterns or dams. These interferons they actually act in a paracrine manner. So they act on cells which are producing it. The interferons they signal the surrounding cells to increase the antiviral defense and they basically induce viral protection in a non-infected alveolar cell. Now, the alveolar macrophages which are present in the alveoli, they detect the cell injury via two things. First up is the damage associated molecular patterns or the dams and the cytokines released by the infected alveolar cell. This causes the alveolar macrophages to release certain chemokines or certain cytokines such as TNF alpha, interleukin 1, interleukin 6 and interleukin 8. Okay, so basically the T cells which are ineffective at eliminating the virus, they are uh, uh, releasing chemical messengers or the cytokines. The infected viral cell are releasing cytokines, the alveolar macrophages are releasing cytokines. So there is an hyperimmune state which is termed as the inflammatory or the cytokine storm. Now this inflammatory process in the lung parenchyma what it does it stimulates the nerve endings which are responsible for initiating cuff reflex. Okay therefore a primary symptom or a early symptom seen uh, in COVID-19 disease is dry cuff. Next, what happens? TNF alpha and interleukin 1, which are the pro inflammatory cytokines, they cause increase in vascular permeability and increase in the expression of adhesion molecule. See, this is the blood vessel. You can see that the vascular permeability is increased. Along with that, there is increased expression of the adhesion molecule. Now, this allows recruitment of more immune cells, including the neutrophils and the monocytes to bind to the adhesion proteins and enter the site of injury. So the increase in circulating monocytes and neutrophils means there is increase in white cell count in the serum. What happens is basically
the interleukin 8 it recruits neutrophils while other chemokines will attract monocytes now increase in vascular permeability it causes leakage of fluids into the interstitium causing interstitial edema then this fluid seeps into the alveoli causing the alveolar or the pulmonary edema this causes dyspnea impaired oxygenation leading to hypoxemia meaning there is low oxygen level in the blood the virus multiplies in the alveolar cells and the neutrophils engulf the virus okay but they release chemicals as byproducts and what happens is there are damaged alveolar cells all over the chemicals which are released by neutrophils after engulfing the virus as byproducts it damages the alveolar cell okay this chemical is absorbed with Pure alveoli mein there is this chemical and this chemical is damaging the alveolar cells the type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes and that the surfactants okay amount of surfactant decreases so the alveoli can easily collapse resulting in impaired oxygenation and hypoxemia okay now white blood cells and the damaged endothelial cells they release other inflammatory mediators such as leukotrienes and prostaglandins which are the arachidonic acid metabolites then leukotriene they cause bronchoconstriction impairing the ventilation and leading to hypoxemia whereas prostaglandins such as tnf alpha interleukin 1 and interleukin 6 they cause a prominent symptom of covid-19 which is fever now the hypoxemia due to leukotrienes it stimulates the chemoreceptors in the aortic arch and in the carotid as well as in the brain what happens is the stimulated chemoreceptors then stimulate the cardiopulmonary centers in the brain and convey the lungs to breathe fast okay and uh, to increase the oxygen level in the blood and they also tell the heart to pump faster to deliver the oxygen to the body so in patients with hypoxemia there is tachypnea and tachycardia usually seen this is it about the pathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2 virus in the coming video we'll be discussing about the signs and symptoms so stay tuned keep visiting thank you